In today's show, we're going to learn to work with a date and time object in PowerShell. Things like adding to or subtracting from a date or time, formatting the output so it looks nice and pretty, the PowerShell methods and properties you can use, and some of the ways you might use these newfound skills with event logs or editing files. Face it, date and time is a daily thing, so learning more about how they work in PowerShell is always helpful. But first, our intro. <laughs> After that music, who couldn't be ready to learn? Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to jump in and talk about date and time. Right now, because it's a fun, exciting thing, you usually don't have projects that you actually care about the date and time. But when we work with PowerShell, there's a lot of date and time stuff we need to do, right? Sorting log files, pulling files uh, from the file system to do different things with them, copying things. So this is kind of laying some of those foundational knowledges so you understand how date and time works. So as you do your real projects, you can kind of plug and play these pieces. Should be a pretty interesting old topic. Should be pretty quick too, so that's the good news. To get started, let's launch PowerShell. So I'm going to set start. I'm going to type in PowerShell. And we will double click on the icon there, or single click, whatever one works for you. So here we're greeted with our PowerShell prompt. And the first thing I always want you to do if you've watched any of my videos, right, is to type in start transcript. So start transcripts is going to give you that running log of everything that you've done here. So as you learn new things, you have them documented. Or if people accuse you of messing everything up by all your playing, you have documentation you didn't mess it up also. Then the first thing I think worth trying here is just a little get date. So type in get date. We'll hit tab complete for enter. So there you go. We can see it's like, hey, it's Wednesday, April 12th, 2017 at 11, 19, a.m. Goodness, a lot of information there, but it works for us. And so the first thing I like to do here is I'm going to put that into a variable. So I'm going to say dollar sign pig equals get date. All right, we'll tab complete again. And now if we type in dollar sign pig, we have that same uh, date time object. And the reason for that is I wanted, it's a little easier to work with, especially the properties and things like that uh, when we have it in a variable. You don't have to do that when you're learning, but it makes it easier. So the first thing we'll do, speaking of the properties, is we're going to do a dollar sign pig, and we're going to pipe that over to select star and hit enter. And so there's all of the properties that have values. So the great thing about this is this gives you kind of that uh, first set of information you can start learning and looking. You know, So for example, maybe you're really just interested what the day of the week is because you need to write that to your log file or your PowerShell script. There it is. It's Wednesday. It's a property. Or what month is it? What uh, day is it? That type of stuff. So a lot of different things there. And the easiest way to use those now is you can just go, do pig day of week, right? We'll tab complete. And so then there you can see that uh, that particular date is Wednesday. Pretty easy to use. Um, you also might try something like pig and then month. And so here you can see that month is currently represented by a four. So here in a minute, we'll look at how do we get that so it says that it's April because April, or maybe the short abbreviated APR, might be a little more convenient for you. All right, so let's clear our screen so we jump back up to the top. And so the next thing I'd like to do here is we're going to go with pig and get-member. Oh, lots of information, so let's scroll back up. So if you're not familiar with some of these things I'm doing, like the piping or the properties, right, there are the beginner PowerShell videos if you check out the YouTube channel. Uh, that have kind of the core basics, but I'm assuming you've watched those so you have an understanding so I don't need to explain what pipe does. But we did get member here because we want to look at the things, the methods, right? And so the methods are the different ways that we can well, work with this, right? The actions that we can take on the system date time object that we've currently have stored in the variable pig. So we can add days, add months, add hours. We can do things like to long date and to short dates or to short time and date, right? Remember, date is both time and date. So those are the methods. And then down here, it shows the properties, which we already talked about, right? When we did the select star, which showed us all of those. So one of the things that you might want to do here is you might want to say something like dollar sign pig to short date, just like that. And so then there is the short date version of the pig variable. So everything's still in the variable, right? But that just returned the short version. Or we could, of course, change the word short to long. And so then there's the fully uh, articulated version of the date. The same type of thing is available for um, time, right? So we can do change the word date to time. And so then there's the long time. So 
uh, you know, nice easy ways to pull the th things out if you're looking to have those converted to that very specific format. The other methods that we might look at are the adding, right? So maybe you need to add time to that. So if we say add, um, lose a little tab there, add months and four, what are we gonna get? Well now instead of April, it's August, right? Because that's four months later. Uh, but if you do dollar sign pig, it's still set to April, right? We didn't change our variable. We just said, take what's in that variable and add uh, four months to it for the output. So for example, if you're trying to create a script that was you know, getting um, content from you know, older or later dates, that's how you would do it. Now, the other interesting thing here, this gets a little confusing sometimes, is what if you wanna go backwards? What if we wanna go backwards four months? Well, what we would do there is we'd say dollar sign pig, we'd say add months, just the same way again, but this time we're gonna do a minus four. So then that takes us back four months. And you can do add months, add day, add hours, add minutes, add seconds, you know, all of those are options available to you. So that lets you kind of manipulate the object. And maybe you need to store that, right? So you might just say dollar sign cow equals, you know, dollar sign pig, add months, minus four. And so then now the dollar sign cow variable would have that December 12th date in it. So sometimes when you're, especially when you're first learning to write scripts, it's easier just to kind of get that all set ahead of time in a variable and then use that cow variable instead of using the line pig add months minus four. Speaking of scripts, the other thing to keep in mind is I like to use the variable pig. It makes it easier for you guys to understand what's going on. But I could also do something like this. I could do get date add months uh, We'll just add two months to it. And so then that gives me two months from today. So uh, right, what it did was it said, hey, get date. So return that value. That's what the first parentheses did. And then based on that object that came out of there, add months, use its method, uh, and add two to it. So another way for you to work with this same information. And so speaking of working with this information, one of the things I use this for is like when I'm working with event logs, right? So I might say get event log and then the system log, and then I would say after, and then we'll do a get date, uh, add minutes, and we will subtract a thousand, like that. So right, get the event log system, all the events from there that occurred after, so in the last thousand minutes. So we hit enter, and so you can see that, ooh, I don't know what I did, my computer's clearly not happy, but that returned all of those events uh, for the last thousand minutes. Of course, when I ran through the demo, there was almost nothing in there, so something might be broke. I should look at that, but not right now. Okay, so that's one of the ways, so I'll clear that off. One more thing when it comes to variables, um, one of the things you can do here is I'm gonna make a new variable, so I'm gonna say new date equals, and then let's see, uh, 6, 3, 2000 at 5, PM. Oh, I needed to put that in quotes though. So I'll do this and this and hit enter. And so then now we have new date, 6.35 PM, right? So that feels good. Um, you're like, hey, that's exactly what I wanted, but it's actually not, right? Because if you do new date and then say get member, scroll back here to the top, what happened? All you did was you stored that date as a uh, system string. So it's not actually a date object, it's just a string, and that's not exactly what you're looking for. So instead, let's look at a better way of doing that. So let's clear our screen again. And so we'll do dollar sign better date, of course, right? Equals, oh, that's not an equal sign, that is. And so what you do here is you do get date, and then you put all of that same information in here. So. 6, 10, 2000, and 5, 0, 0 p.m., just like that. So that stores in there. If we type in better date, oh, it's Saturday, June 10th, right? That's our hint that if we do now better date and get member, we scroll back to the top. So now it's stored in there as a system date time object. So now you can do things like add month, too long string, too short string, all of those commandlets that we looked at a minute ago because you just stored a specific date and time, the one you needed, into a variable. So keep that in mind also. If you wanna create the variable as a date object, you need to do get date to do that. The next thing we're gonna look at is formatting those dates. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do clear screen again. And so we're gonna say get date 
dollar sign pig, right? So we get our date that's already stored in there, pig. But this time we're going to format it. Oh, we're going to take advantage of the formatting features and we're going to do four M's. So that just returns the long month of April, right? That was one of the things we wanted to see earlier. If you do short MM, well, that's 04. And if you do three MMMs, that's APR, right? The abbreviation for April. So there's a lot of these different formatting options, right? So that's a great one. Um, you could also do things like uh, D, right, for the date, or DD, that's the day. So you have some different options there, or one, two, three, four, four Ds for the Wednesday. So I don't expect you to learn all this right now or memorize any of it. If you look down in the description below, I'll have a link to a TechNet article that talks about all of these different formatting parameters, so all the different M's and D's and that type of stuff that you need to know. But it is worth noting you can get a little crazier. So like we could do something like this. We could go one, two, three, four M's, space, two D's, comma, and then four Y's. Close that. So April, oh, let's try that again. One, two, three, four. See, I didn't get them right on the first try. Uh, April 12th, 2017. So, and this is the last thing I wanted to point out to you. I actually made a mistake, but I didn't mean to make a mistake, but I plan on making a mistake. So, who knows? Anyway, is that uh, these letters are case sensitive. So, big M's versus little M's, uh, big Y's versus little Y's, they are different things. So, make sure when you're playing with these formatting options that you don't let the, uh, the case sensitivity mess with you, right? Because little M's are minutes, for example. So, just keep that in mind as you go forward. And then I think, you know, just one other example I had here because I end up using this one a lot is m.d.yy. So 4.12.17, right? Very compact little date. And this is just all about what format either the command that you're working with need the date in or if you're creating log files, right? For example, I used to automate a lot of this stuff by creating CSV files. And in the CSV files, you know, my boss was a pain in the butt and he wanted it to be written as April 12th, 2017. He couldn't handle it being 4 12 17. So, just a matter of working through the parameters you need. The nice thing is, is the get date function has all these different formatting options. Get date also has one other for, set of formatting options, and that is going to be uh, get date dollar sign pig, and it is called the U format for uh, uh, the unit format, sorry. And what you'll see there is you can do things like Julian date. So if you do uh, percent %j, that tells you that uh, 4 12, uh, 17 this is the 102nd day of the year. So there's those type of things. I believe if we do the same thing, but we change that to a V, let's try a Y. If you change that to a Y, not a V, um, th that is going to be the week. So it is the 17th week of the year. So other options available to you. I don't do a lot with the U format stuff, clearly, um, but it is another thing that's available in your tool belt as you're kind of building out these uh, capabilities. So hopefully that helps. Let's clear our screen off. And the last thing I wanna show you is actually the whole reason I made this video series, and that is the fact that you can work with dates with things like file system objects, AKA files. So let's switch over to my demos folder, CD demos. And we do a DIR, I got one file in there, perfect. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say dollar sign zebra equals get item expense.pdf dollar sign zebra. All right, so that's stored in there. And then I'm gonna do my good old friend select star. I do a lot of select stars in my life. The reason I did that is I want you guys to see that there's several different things here, uh, properties about a file. And we're not gonna cover the files today. But the things I'm curious about are things like creation time. So creation time was December 11th. Last access time was April 11th. And last write time was August of 2013. Who knows? Who cares? But what I find myself doing a lot of times when I need to move files from point A to point B, especially in my case when I'm moving things from on-prem to SharePoint Online, I need to manipulate or query this data object. So I just kind of want to show you guys how you would do that so you kind of had an understanding of it because in a later video I'm going to show how to move it to SharePoint Online and then reset the create date to the same value that was here instead of the day you moved over the file and this is the basis of that. What we're going to do is we're going to type in dollar sign zebra 
and then we're gonna do creation time, hit enter. So you can see that that's a date time value, right? We recognize that pretty well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say dollar sign uh, zebra creation time equals dollar sign pig dot, um, what do you wanna do? You wanna add months, let's add months. Add months and we'll subtract nine. So that way I can be shocked as well. So boom. So that's that just changed the value of that file, right? So now if we do dollar sign zebra creation time, we can see that the file's creation time is Tuesday, uh, July 12th, 2016. Uh, pretty simple, right? But kind of interesting to understand because we can just edit creation time and access time and uh, write time. And that gives us a lot of power when we start moving files, rearranging things, because now we know with PowerShell we could script resetting all the times, or when we move the file, you know, you could use something like RoboCopy to move the file and take these parameters with you, but sometimes you just want to fix them. And so PowerShell kind of opens the door for that. So hopefully that helps you guys with date and time objects, gives you a little context to how this all works, and is uh, just good plain old fashioned fun. So if you ever need any help with any of this, Good old bold zebras, right? We write PowerShell scripts for people. We run PowerShell training classes. We've got a couple coming up soon. Um, and then we'll add some more to the schedule always. So you can always reach out to me at Shane's Cows or Shane.Young at boldzebras.com. Happy to help you. So also check out the next videos in the series. They'll pop up here on the end. So thanks and have a great day.